Well, hello again. Another question for the yes or no treatment. I keep saying in this series, oh, this is one of the biggest ones, but I, I would suspect this really is maybe the biggest question in the world right now. And that is, will it ever be the same? It's certainly one that probably more people in the world are thinking about than any other question. <laughs> Uh, but by the, what do I mean by will it ever be the same? Well, I mean really the same as when it all started, which was only about you know, 15, 16 months ago. Uh, we're experiencing perhaps the, the greatest disruption to our lives since, uh, say, since and maybe even including the Second World War. So, so this is big stuff we're talking about here. It's really important, it's very far reaching. So we have to be wondering, is it all going to change forever, or is it going to go back kind of nicely to the way it was? Well, let's, let's look at the possible answers here. First of all, those who would say yes would say, look, uh, humanity is resilient. We, we've been through so many problems, so many disasters over the years. This is just one more. We'll sort it out, we'll come back, it'll be a bit inconvenient, have to put up with a few uh, different ideas, but basically it's going to be the same. It'll, it'll go back to the way it was. Uh, and in addition, of course, we have this tremendous need to, to socialize, uh, to get together with other people. I mean, some of us are happy to be hermits, <laughs> or to be recluses, but most people want to maintain friendships and relationships with other people. That's what we're all kind of yearning for. And the pressure to do that is is just uh, huge. So that's gonna happen. One way or another, that's gonna happen. So in that sense, it will uh, go back to uh, the way it was. Uh, the stock markets seem to be booming. So what the stock markets are really saying is well, there might be some inconvenience here, but pretty, pretty soon it's, we, we're going to be back in the swing of things. Things are going to be okay. Uh, stock markets hate uncertainty, and they seem to be saying there isn't any uncertainty about this. Things, things are going to get sorted out. So, as I say, history has been replete, replete with crises of this sort. Of every kind imaginable, we've even had epidemics and pandemics before. Okay, they had, they had a big effect, but we eventually get back to doing things the way we wanted to do them, and, and things return to normal. History teaches us that. That's, gonna, that's what's going to happen this time. Well, there's a, a, a sunny, positive point of view. Always glad to hear <laughs> positive views of the way things are. But, of course, there are some negative views. Not necessarily gloomy or Jeremiah's, but but there are a lot of people who believe that there is just no chance that things are going to get back to the way they were. So let's uh, tick off some of those. Well, first of all, there are some of the immediate points, all of which really are driven by social distancing and kind of the reversion to the internet as an alternative to getting close to, physically close to people. It, it really makes a huge difference. I mean, uh, first of all, of course, we have the impact on traditional retailing and so forth and the, uh, and the increasing use of online retailing, Amazon and the like. Uh, and uh, even though stores here in, in Britain are opening tomorrow, <laughs> uh, I'm not quite convinced that people will go back in the numbers they did before. There will be a huge rush, of course, but, but uh, the habit of uh, shopping online uh, has really become firmly entrenched, and, and many won't go back, back the other way. So that's going to mean tough times for, for traditional retailers, particularly for those retailers whose goods can easily be bought online. Uh, food retailers would be okay because you can't really buy the food very easily online. That, but, but not very effectively. But for the other people, oh, that's, that's really a big thing. Travel, holiday travel. Gosh, it certainly looks like uh, that's going to uh, that's going to change. People, I think, are going to be well initially very reluctant to travel because they're going to have to go through 
a lot of difficulty to even be allowed on a plane. Expensive tests, uh, perhaps uh, distancing on the plane that will drive prices up. All, all of that's going to be difficult. Maybe they don't even want to get involved in crowds walking through the Forum in Rome or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's going to happen. And certainly business travel, on which many airlines uh, rely because the uh, fares for business travelers are really so huge compared to that for, for tourists. Business travel is really going to take a beating because so many businesses have figured out that they don't really need to travel. They can communicate pretty effectively online. Every company now is Zooming and, and Microsoft Teaming and WhatsApping and doing all that kind of thing for communication and, and uh, therefore making it really, uh, in many respects, unnecessary for much, much business travel. Some business travel, of course, will take place, but I would suspect at a far, far lesser rate of me than in the past. And then what about education, uh, university education, and, and education for which people have to pay? Uh, perhaps they're not going to be so inclined at least to, to pay for food and lodging in a university where they can just as easily get that learning online. And there are alternative institutions that provide that kind of education. Khan Academy. Khan Academy. A wonderful facility that's being used around the world where there are wonderfully articulate, well-presented courses for free in just about any subject that you can name. Uh, the notion of learning online has already become established during the pandemic. People are getting used to doing that. So eventually, they're going to get used to using the free online facilities. So education, both secondary education, university education, and so forth, is, is up for a big change. Now, that, those are just the minor changes. What about the world of work? Uh, the whole idea that you don't really have to go to work, have to go to an office for much of what you do. You can stay at home and and do it all online, or do, do it all online. Now, now, what a change that's becoming. The uh, recent announcement by one of the big banks that they're gonna get rid of half of their office space around the world, my goodness. Uh, so not only is uh, remote working uh, moving in at a great pace, and, and particularly uh, replacing people who uh, are involved in, for example, financial transactions and things that can be handled much more easily in a, in a digital way. Of course, people will want to meet and see their chums and, and uh, get together and, and form personal relationships, but on nowhere near the same level as in the past. So, uh, anybody who's in the business of owning and renting office space is probably going to be in a lot of trouble. A lot of those big buildings that we see uh, in, the, in the big cities are gonna start emptying out, I'm afraid. Wow, what a, what a change that's gonna be. And what a treat for people not, have, not to have to go through the incredibly wasteful process of commuting, the waste of time, the waste of energy, the cost, uh, all of that really looks like it's, it's, uh, it's headed for big change. And beyond that, uh, there are some things that are happening anyway, quite apart from the impact of the coronavirus, but along the same lines. The world of work uh, is not only changing from the standpoint of robotics, changing physical work and, and the traditional manufacturing job, I'm afraid it's starting to replace uh, just about everybody, middle managers, uh, a lot of uh, uh, laboratory scientific endeavor and so forth is gradually being taken up by AI, by artificial intelligence. The impact in that we're just starting to see right now. We, we're seeing the huge uh, ability of artificial intelligence to do things. Uh, all I have to do is to say to my tablet and my phone, uh, when was Charlton Heston born? And a voice comes back and tells me right away. <laughs> or uh, more immediate things like, is the restaurant around the corner open yet? And, and things like that. Uh, 
So when you think about it, there doesn't need to be a person there answering the question. It's all robotic. It's all being handled by uh, access to Namas databases and so forth. What a big, big change that is. So that's a change that's taking place at a headlong pace alongside of the effects of the uh, coronavirus, but, but uh, a very considerable as well. Another huge probable change that I can see coming is the way in which we select our political leaders, especially in democratic systems. Uh, it's not going to affect uh, Kim Jong-un's career, I don't think, or Putin's, but, but the notion that uh, a national leader should actually be a capable manager rather than just a good talker or a, a, a flamboyant crowd pleaser or whatever is uh, perhaps an idea whose time has come. Uh, I think Boris is going to have trouble uh, uh, keeping his uh, job uh, long term because he doesn't, hasn't done a very good job managing this whole thing. Trump, uh, the less said the better. Uh, America is now in the hands of a capable, uh, capable leader who actually makes decisions based on the facts, it seems. Joe Biden seems to be that sort of person. The uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand is heroic. Uh, she's got great credit for managing the whole coronavirus problem very well, very well. Uh, great credit from around the world, and I'm sure her political future is assured on that basis. Uh, so I would guess that uh, any political leader that doesn't, doesn't demonstrate his ability to uh, grasp hold of a problem, to manage it, to consider the options, and then, <laughs> and then action a program to, to, to solve the problems, to deal with the issues, is going to be a lot less favored in the future. That's a big change. And then, uh, finally, let me say that the notion of dealing with the financial impact of the coronavirus is going to be enormous. Uh, the uh, fact that we have spent money like we have not spent, uh, perhaps in proportion to the size of our economy since the Second World War, uh, means that one way or another, we're going to have to figure out how to put that right. We can't. Number one, we can't keep spending at that level. But number two, the debts that we've piled up at some point, at some point, are probably going to have to be repaid. Now, some would say, oh, you don't really have to repay these debts as long as you do something reasonable to, to reassure the financial markets that uh, uh, you're going to at least be able to service the debt. Well, a lot of, there's a lot of ifs in that. So we've got some real nervousness about this. And I would expect that there's going to be uh, a bit of a, a, a bit of tension about uh, where that money's going to come from. Well, presumably because we're still going to want to spend money in all the social programs we have in Western countries, it's going to have to come from tax revenue, and it's probably going to have to come from very rich people. We're going to have to tax uh, income. We're going to have to tax estate taxes, the death duties at a lot higher rate, perhaps we're going to have to have a tax on wealth. There's going to be a huge fight about this. That is really going to change the landscape. It'll certainly change the political map because, of course, politicians who have traditionally defended the rights of the wealthy and the privileged and so forth are suddenly going to smell uh, <laughs> voter problems and are going to have to as it were, switch allegiances. So, so we're headed for a big fight there. Well, gosh, I mean, how amazing is all of that? Those changes are just huge. I mean, they're, they're just mind-boggling. Uh, and uh, so the argument for the fact that uh, it won't be the same, I, I would think, is a, is a pretty strong one. Well, what's my take on this? Well, my take uh, quickly comes back to one of uncertainty. We, we don't know the answers to some important questions which are really going to impact how enormous these changes are and what kind of impact they're going to have on us. Uh, for example, social distancing uh, is a big factor in all of this. How long is that going to go on? When are we going to not have to social distance? When are we going to be able to sit next to somebody at the opera house or on a plane or in our choral societies. <laughs> uh, 
That is going to be a function of the, the, the fear of the transmission and contagion of this, of this disease. And so in many respects, we're still, as I said in a previous video on the subject, we're still kind of in the hands of scientists. And scientists are going to have to be able to give us the, the reassurance that if we do sit next to somebody, we won't catch what they have or we won't transmit it to that person. Or if we do get it, we can get it sorted out pretty quickly and get cured. Uh, that, that's why science is, is so important. In the meantime, we really are very uncertain about this. The uh, famous futurist, the, the one that uh, I must say <laughs> really impresses me above all others, uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Now, he's the chap that wrote Sapiens and, and uh, uh, Questions for the 21st Century and a few books like that. What he has said is that this whole uh, pandemic situation is going to force us to con confront some quite difficult issues that, that we're really not very well equipped for. For example, we're going to have to kind of manage the trade-off between health and privacy. Uh, in, in China, for instance, they are really monitoring people online in everything that they do, even their uh, pulse and heart rate in many respects. So we really are having a big brother watching us prospect here if we're going to spot incipient uh, spread of this disease and other diseases like it. Or are we going to say, no, privacy is too important, let her rip. <laughs> That's a tough decision. And then the other big decision I think that we have to face, and, and uh, we're not doing too well on it so far, is how uh, magnanimous we're going to be as nations about sharing things. Are we, are we going to be nationalistic and say, screw everybody else, we're going to just protect ourselves and our voters and, and we're going to keep all of our uh, facilities for developing solutions and so forth to ourselves or, or are we going to try to cooperate around the world and see if we can make it a better world together? Wow, what a big question. So I guess what I'm saying in my take is I see all those changes taking place that I mentioned above in the uh, notion uh, or the uh, no answers, no, it will, it will never be the same. But on top of that, uh, I see a great uncertainty because we have all these questions and trade-offs and issues that we haven't even begun to address. So stand by, as they, as they said in the movie, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a bumpy night tonight. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that. Didn't get too uh, <laughs> traumatized by it because uh, it's, it's the sort of thing that could traumatize you really if you thought about it too carefully. But anyway, that's what I think, and I uh, hope you liked it. The usual stuff. Uh, give me a like, notify, comment, uh, subscribe, etc., and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.